Hey guys, my name is Fen, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a free studio setup scene. And I've included in the description there will be a link to this file here, which is a free studio scene that I've literally just made. And you unzip it from this file, you need WinRAR or WinZip, it is the same thing. And basically, you grab this folder, whip it on your desktop, you go to your start menu, my computer, you go to your C drive. If you're on 64-bit, 64-bit. If you're on 32-bit, go 32-bit. I'm on 64-bit, so I'm going to go to my 64-bit uh, programs folder. And then I'm going to go into Maxon. And then I'm going to go into Cinema 4 R13. Go into Library, Browser. And then drag and just drop this in here. Now, for me, the file is already there, so that's fine. Once you've done that, exit out of that. Load up Cinema 4D. Job is a good one. So you can either go to Windows and then go to Content Manager or Content Browser rather. Or you can go over here and tell it to you. I like to do it in a separate window. So I'm going to load this up and the following file have damaged or free studio scene on 3D. So, so it must be damaged. So I, it's because I removed it from here. So I need to delete that actually. Um, do, 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 do. Well, I'll do that in my own time. Um, but basically, if you want to find this file now, you will actually have to um, go to it. Now, you can actually put this in your presets if you want, but it's better to put it into your actual library and in your browser. So, go to my computer, go to C drive, and then we want to just scroll out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Program files, and the same thing, you just need to find it. So, for us, it's Maxon, Cinema 4DR13. It's going to be in a library, in browser. And here is our file right here. So if we want to actually add this to favorites, just right click, add to favorites. And then what you need to do is click this, I think it's the star, yeah, the star. And then it'll always be there for you. So you don't have to go rummaging around with your folders for it again. So once you've got it, double click it and then double click this and it will load it in for you. Now, I'm not sure if it actually saves settings as well. But we will actually look at that right now. If not, I'll show you how to set up the settings here. So we've got a few things in this scene. Now, if you want a tutorial on how to set up these lights, currently the lights are turned off just so you can actually see what you're doing in the viewport. If I turn the lights on, you will see they're these type of lights. Now, you might have seen these before. These have been made popular by um, Nick Campbell from Grayscale Gorilla. He has made... A light like this, which is 10 billion times better than this one because it has interactive options that is basically Expresso. Now, this is just a simple light, so therefore, if you want to edit this, you would have to actually go into the light and do it manually from all these properties. Now, if you do want to edit these, the, the things that you would actually change is the, the intensity of the lights, which is here in general. So, scroll this down, find the light, and reduce the intensity or change the color, whichever it's your personal preference. And um, also, you might want to reduce the um, fall off of the light. So you would also go into details, and the fall off is down here. So they're the two main things you would need to know. Again, shadows, it's entirely up to you. But all the options are in the lights. Um, they've they've been set up pretty default. Um, they should work on pretty much anything that you've got. Um, what we have here is basically we've got lights around this box. If I unhide them all, you will see the setup we have. It's basically a box. It's got a floor. It's got a roof. Well, it doesn't really have a roof. It's got a back plate um, here. And basically, it's just lights all the way around it. And this is a, a box studio. This is for things like coins and stuff like that. When you take pictures of them, you have this type of setup. So it's a very nice setup. There's many ways you can do this, but this is one of the ways I have done it. So I'm actually going to turn these off again because they do tend to get in the way, especially when you're trying to zoom in. Um, it, it lags the system and whatnot. So you do need to keep these off. Um, but they will rend well. They will render out when you actually render the scene, but you won't see them in the viewport, which is what we want. So we've got a curved background here to give us the illusion of a soft backdrop. Um, otherwise, it'd just be a harsh curve, which we don't want. These you can actually find in the backdrops here. So you can actually see how I built it as well. And then we've got the replacement items. This is where you would replace your items. So I'm actually going to go into the sphere and press S on my keyboard, which will kind of 
um, jump me into that thing and then I'm actually gonna just line this up now I don't think the render settings have actually been saved but we will go through them right now so go to render settings I'm gonna change this to you know 1280 by 720 you know standard HD we're gonna enable global illumination for the purpose of this I'm gonna reduce the settings on you you probably could just leave them as they are it probably would render out pretty decently and I'm also gonna go and enable ambient occlusion because we want these shadows to be a little bit intensified so we have some you know oomph to the actual render now once you've got this all lined up just um, hit render and everything should render out pretty damn nicely now I'm not sure how long this will take it could vary it will vary on your system Sometimes it'll be faster, sometimes it'll be slower. It really depends, and especially if you start adding in reflections and stuff, which the sphere does have. It has reflections, so you can actually see what the studio looks like. But again, this will all depend on the materials you use. So the lights could need some adjusting, um, the colours could need changing, and stuff like that. I've gone for like a really whitey blue look, you know. It's not pure white, which a studio it pretty is much pure white. But I wanted to add it, add some character to this um, studio setup, so I actually did add in a, a blue tinge to all the lights. Now, of course, you can actually change these if you wanted to, so you can have different color lights, make it look um, as nice as you want. I'm just gonna bring this out a little bit just so we can actually see the full product once it's rendered out, and it's almost there. It's taking about about a minute, I'd say about a minute 30 and it should be done. I mean that's not too bad. Um, of course if you're doing animation this would obviously need to be changed. Um, maybe not so many lights and stuff like that, maybe not so many shadows. Because at the minute all lights are emitting shadows, which of course all lights do. But you might want to turn some off just in case. Um, and of course you might want to turn ambient occlusion off or even turn it down. It really depends because as you can see we're getting some really dark shadows at the bottom here. And that's thanks to ambient occlusion. So 1 minute 35 now. Almost there. And I don't think that's too bad. So about 1 minute 42 seconds. Yeah, 1 minute 42 seconds. That's pretty decent. So let's scroll into 100%. And that looks pretty nice. We've got some really lovely highlights on this text. Really nice. And the sphere looks pretty decent as well. We've got some really nice shadows. Um, keep in mind though, this sphere is actually indented into the ground, if that makes sense. It's actually passing through this plane. Uh, I didn't really change it because these items will be changed from you. But it will look ten times better once you actually change it. And again, it really depends what materials you use. If you change the colour of the background, fair enough. You could maybe add some reflections. It would take longer to render. But then again, it would just be the same. It, it would look nice. And um, The text is really nice. I really love the highlights on these corners. It makes it feel really smooth and just a really nice feeling to look at. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I hope you enjoy the free scene. And if you use it, you know, maybe do a video response and show me what you used it in. Or if, if, it's, if it's a picture, then of course leave the link um, in a video or PM me the link and I'll probably review it in one of my videos and show people, you know, what you guys have actually done. Um, if you want to know how to actually make these lights, then let me know and I'll do a tutorial on it. It doesn't have to be 10,000 people requesting this. If just one person requests it, I'll be more than happy to actually do a tutorial on it. Um, so that being said, guys, thank you very much for watching. You can find a link in the description to this uh, Cinema 4D file. And then I've already showed you how to import it and use it. So good luck, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.